All right, guys, on the bench, we have a Cobra 29 LTD Classic. Uh, what's so special about this? Uh, that it's mine. This was my workhorse radio for years and years and years. Um, so it's a side mic. Um, you know, nothing, nothing too crazy. Uh, you know, coffin mic. And, uh, yeah, so this was in my uh, service truck when I had my um, diesel repair shop. I also had a service truck. And it was a uh, 95 uh, Ram 3500 with a 5.9 turbo diesel, uh, four-wheel drive, five-speed uh, manual. So, yeah, it was a really, really nice truck, collectible by today's standards, uh, with an 11-foot SCOG body. Uh, which I think they're still in business. Uh, I think that they're uh, they do like custom uh, utility bodies uh, out of California. So it was uh, yeah, a very desirable truck, and uh, I actually sold it to a kid in Canada. Some uh, some Canadian came down and paid top dollar for it. Had paid the import fees and all that other stuff. So yeah, it was a very desirable truck. But anyway, this was. Um, this is uh, the radio that I've had in actually several of my trucks. So, um, and when I sold out, I put this in storage. And it's been sitting for a few years now. And uh, in my current truck, which is my 88 Ram Charger, um, I keep uh, my radio in that, so a Cobra 146 GTL. So, uh, yeah, this one kind of just, uh, this is like my workhorse, so it's a little banged up. Um, you know, uh... A little bit of wear tear, but you know, uh, nothing, uh, nothing that deters from the function of the radio itself. Um, when I put it away, the meter was working, um, the light was working, um, but as of right now, the uh, meter stuck, light's gone, and uh, I could probably use uh, recap. Um, they're definitely at the end of their service life, so yeah. So when I went to go pull the knobs off. They were all extremely tight on there. They were very difficult to remove because they were kind of grimy or whatever. So I want to just, you know, wash them off. So when I went to go adjust, you know, these, uh, the tab there with a pair of pliers, uh, this must have been weak in there, something. I don't know uh, if these are just poor, poor castings or what from these uh, knobs, but they're just, they're not right. And I ended up cracking that one. So fortunately I have, I have all of these in stock. So I'll be swapping that out for a new one uh, try to get this meter needle working uh, if I can do that I'll swap out the bulb if not it's gonna need a new meter and a recap so uh, yeah let me get that done and uh, obviously in alignment so yeah so I still have the original paperwork still have the box for it so yeah so uh, let me get this done these are the uh, kits that I made up um, myself. Um, these contain, you know, most of the more common stuff that I come across on, uh, you know, radios that I service. Uh, this kit here is, uh, I think this is all, what I think, this is all uh, Nichicon. Uh, maybe a couple of the values are um, Comic-Con, but uh, I'd say 95% of the ones in here are all Nichicon. And then this one here is, these are all mixed, but these are all brand name uh, caps, um, you know, bought from reputable places. Um, you know, those kits that you see on eBay, uh, they're, they're trash. You know, don't even, uh, don't even use those. Uh, unless you're doing like, um, you know, breadboard stuff, you're experimenting, you know, with, uh, you know, your own circuits. Uh, you know, those, that's probably what those are good for, but... You know, when you're actually recapping, you know, radios or not just, you know, CBs, uh, receivers, uh, you know, uh, anything else, uh, you definitely want to stay with the brand name. Now, Digicon makes their own kits too, um, but I feel like um, a lot of the values are missing uh, from those kits. So, um, yeah, I just, uh, this is from, you know... Uh, the caps themselves are from Digi, uh, from uh, DigiKey, but um, you know they're uh, they're just you know uh, self-made. So these are the ones I come across more often. In between both these kits here, um, you know, 
you can usually do like 95% of uh, the radios and then uh, I also have a uh, NTE kit um, that's not here it's it's uh, up in this uh, mezzanine I have behind me and uh, yeah that's a uh, like an automotive grade uh, high temp um, kit from NTE um, but yeah, if uh, you guys are interested in making up your own kits, these are the values here that I use uh, most frequently. So, yeah, that's what I use. So a tip when recapping. Um, what I do is, so I don't get confused as to, you know, which caps that I've, you know, replaced already. I just like to um, mark the tops of them. of the original ones you know and I go around and do them all and uh, you know that way you don't get confused you know and uh, you know exactly which ones you've done already and which ones you haven't so in my case I mean I don't really need to mark the blue ones because uh, the caps I'm gonna be putting in here I, I don't think uh, I think they're pretty much all black um, um, you know the ones that I'm gonna be putting in here but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just good practice to uh, mark the tops of them so that way you know that those are the old ones. And as you, you know, move along down on the radio, um, you know, you don't get confused or unsolder, you know, uh, a good cap that you just replaced. So, yeah, I figured I'd just share that with, with you guys. All right, just another tip on recapping. So, trying to locate the cap on the other side of the uh, the board. Um, you know, sometimes it could be tricky. Um, sometimes, you know, they're, they're pretty easy. But in this case, we have, let's just say we're going after this capacitor here. So we have this transformer that's, um, you know, right beside it. And usually this, not usually, it's always, uh, you know, this um, mount or the strap that goes around the transformer is always soldered onto the ground plane on the board. And uh, when we look at the capacitor itself, too, we can see the negative is uh, clearly marked. So we know the pins are going this way, and, you know, it can't be this way. So uh, we know that the pins are going, you know, kind of like north to south. And we know that it's going to be right beside this uh, ground strap um, for this um, transformer. So let me try to get get you guys at a better angle here and you can see what I'm talking about so you can see that this right there is one of the transformer uh, tabs and this will be the top one and the bottom one and then these two terminals here is the um, capacitor that we're going to change and you'll notice too that it's never on the same plane you know, it's always going to be on two different planes. So you can see one leg is on there and one leg is on there. So, um, you know, it's another sign that we know that this is the, the legs that we're going after. So let me put this down here. Hopefully you guys can see that. And now, just get my soldering iron. And now, uh, you want to kind of rock, rock the legs back and forth. And there we go. There's one capacitor out. This is an Acon 1000 microfarad, 25 volts, which I have plenty of those. But yeah, that's um, that's basically yeah how you do it. So you kind of use what you can see for basically like landmarks, you know, as to kind of guide you on the other side of the board. And uh, yeah, that's that's just another tip on uh, you know recapping. So you see here where the uh, capacitor is where we took out and you can see that this dot here in the case of this board this represents where the negative terminal is uh, gonna go through 
on the uh, on the capacitor. And uh, as we discussed before, the negative terminal is uh, going to be where the stripe is, but it's also the shorter of the terminals. You can see. But sometimes you'll get a capacitor that, uh, let me see if I can find one here. Both terminals are the same. Uh, yeah, just one. They're actually the same. So you have to kind of make sure that the stripe is, you know, uh, aligned properly with the uh, minus mark on the... Uh, the negative mark on the uh, on the board. Some boards are different as well. Sometimes you'll see a board that will give you a plus sign for the positive and then not have a dot for the negative. And then in some cases you'll have a board that'll mark both sides. You'll have a minus and a plus. So yeah, there's just something to um, you know to keep in mind. So yeah, short stripe negative all right moving on all right so you did a couple of caps so we did four of them here swap those out there's another one in back in there so we did four in total so especially if you're new at capping um test the radio right now make sure that you know uh whatever work you've done so far hasn't um, hindered or, uh, you know, hasn't gone uh, bad. And, um, you know, so just turn your radio on. Make sure that everything is working. So let's turn this on. All right, radio's on. Let's see if we... Uh... Audio, 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 audio. All right, everything's still working. So yeah, let's uh, continue on. I think that it's um, you know just best to. Uh, it's what I do. I've been doing this for a while, and uh, but yeah, that that's you know even even myself, I'll do four or five uh, caps, uh, sometimes less, sometimes I'll do a couple, um, you know, and then test the radio. So now what you want to do is definitely make sure to turn the radio off again. Um, you know, I can't stress how important that is, um, you know, so yeah, just please, please, please make sure that after you test the radio, turn everything back off, you know, and make sure the radio is off, because you definitely don't want to blow an IC or, you know, uh, something on the radio, um, because you definitely don't want to do, um, any sort of soldering while the radio is live, you know, so just please, please, please make sure that if you are doing this at home, and you, uh, you do a few caps, test out the radio, shut the radio back off. Super important. All right, she's all done. Looking good, if I say so myself. Um, yeah, so we got, got it recapped. Um, all the uh, caps are there. We got the, uh, the potentiometer changed out for the Dynamite. And uh, yeah, that's, that's in, everything's in recapped um, I upgraded some of the values uh, on some of the uh, like 16 volt capacitors um, so I think I changed them all to like 25 and up um, so yeah even some of the capacitance I think if I could go bigger I went bigger with some of them uh, you don't have to go crazy on these radios you know um, but wherever you uh, you know if you can fit Depending on the circuit, too, if you can fit a bigger uh, capacitance and a uh, higher voltage, uh, you know, it doesn't hurt any. So, yeah, that's, that's what I did. Got her uh, clean, so I took off all the knobs and uh, cleaned them up with some, like, Dawn or any, you know, whatever your favorite dish uh, detergent is. Uh, got the mic cleaned up. It's looking better. And, uh, yeah, so full alignment. Um, sounding good. And then I uh, gave the bezel and the uh, the front a little polish. So it's looking way better uh, with the help of that stuff. And, uh, yeah, you can find that white diamond, basically, any, any like, good 
um, you know, truck shop, a truck stop, uh, we'll have, we'll have that, I think that one there I got at, if I'm not mistaken, it was Barubi's up in, uh, up in New Hampshire, um, that's probably, uh, unfortunately for Massachusetts residents, uh, I think that, uh, or Massachusetts truckers, um, you know, I think the, the closest, um, you know, decent, like, a truck shop, truck stop, uh, chrome, chrome shop, whatever you want to call it is, uh, would be up in New Hampshire, Barubies, but, uh, yeah, I think they have a CV shop up there, too, but, um, yeah, anyway, with the help of that white diamond, I got everything nice and, nice and, uh, polished, you gotta be careful, you can't go too crazy, uh, cause then you might lose the silk screen, uh, you know, the lettering, you know, so you have to kind of go light with it, uh, and, um, yeah, so, that's it, it's the only advice I can give you on that, if you go, if your bezel's already worn, and, um, you know, the letters are already starting to fade, it's probably not a good idea to, uh, to polish this front, um, but, you know, if you go, you know, if you have a decent front, and it's just a little oxidized, you know, uh, that stuff really helps, so that white diamond, yeah, so that's, uh, that's it, got the, uh, I decided to go with the, um, the bright white, or the super white LED, um, you know, it's not like glaring in your face, you can actually read, uh, the meter, you know, I hate it when it's so bright you can't even read anything, um, so yeah, it's looking, looking good, and, um, sounding good too, let's, uh, get this, uh, up on the, uh, Super Bowl, see what, uh, see what's going on, Motormouth Mall was on earlier, Some good skip coming in early, and now it's kind of dying off. Channel 11 lately has been blowing up. I don't know if everyone's just getting sick and tired of the Super Bowl. That's probably lower sideband. 38's a big lower sideband. Too much echo. Anyway, that's uh, that's it. Um, yeah, I mean, I know it's your regular, you know, run of the mill side mic Cobra 29, but it's mine. This was my workhorse for years and years. And, um, yeah, before I, uh, before I got my, uh, 140, uh, my 148 GTL, uh, this was my, uh, my workhorse. All right, guys, hope you liked, um, hope you liked it. Um, subscribe, uh, like the video. If you have any comments, please leave them, suggestions on future videos. Uh, just let me know. Thanks for watching.